Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Imperial Dean, with another propaganda cast for you. And today we have a bit of a surprise. It's no longer a one versus one, but it is a two versus two today on rails and metals. Yes, indeed, it is rails and metals that rather steady two versus two map. And there has in fact been some changes to this map, as you may notice here. There is a part of the fence missing, thus meaning that this house isn't so easily enclosed off, meaning that you can approach from several times, of course. It's not that huge a gap, oh, but there's also one here, but they can be somewhat easily closed off with barbed wire, so if you're the usual type to go for barbed wire anyway, it's not going to be a huge task for you. Anyhow, let's go have a look at the two forces opposing each other today. In the northern corner representing the 1st Infantry Division with two companies, we have Chomega, Captain Chomega, ready to, I don't know, kick some jerry ass and we have here core 28 apparently a bit confused as to what unit division he's belonging to he's marked everything as core 28 a bit unfortunate we shall name him major c and he is of course leading the able company so let's have a look at the wehrmacht forces we have here major gaurau of the 709th bodenständige grenadier division basically a fortress division which after having been forced away from the beaches of Normandy are regrouping and trying to set up a defensive line here at this railway intersection to prevent the Allies from crossing through and who does he have to support him but another regiment under command of Hauptmann Trichelou or Trich Trichelou, I'm not entirely sure how that's pronounced leading the Ostrogen regiment the Ostrogen being composed of Russians and Poles from prison camps who were given the choice of staying there or taking up arms for the Reich and manning some cozy position on the coast of France. They weren't the best of fighters but they did alright occasionally. So let's have this on the 709th Bodenständige versus the 1st Infantry Division. Bodenständige meaning more or less standfast division. They were basically static infantry divisions, not really meant for any vast movements across territory. But basically meant to hold static emplacements. We see two pioneer teams moving ahead to set up this Wehrmacht quarters and we see the exact same thing being mirrored here in Trichelus war camp. His Ust pioneers courageously setting up the Wehrmacht quarters and we're seeing an MG42 so he'll probably be trying to go for this building and setting up there with an MG which is a rather usual tactic in this map since this building does overlook two strategic point victory points a rather vital strategic point and a fuel point rather huge you may also try this with this building but it's a lot weaker and can be much more easily knocked out otherwise as you may notice victory points on a row and the highest fuel points being right here and there, otherwise the rest are low yield. So again, this building is of rather high strategic importance on this map, and not just a tactical advantage building. Pioneers quickly setting up for the route here, and the MG42 rushing ahead, and we'll have to see... We also see the Ostrofen setting up their own MG42. Engineers quickly moving into this building in an attempt to deny it to the Wehrmacht. It's also a rather common tactic, but certainly looks like the forces under Major C has gone for the barracks and for Chomega as well. So it's going to be a rather static versus more fluid force right from the beginning on. We'll have to see. False grenadiers, those are not all bad. Getting some infantry to spice things up and keep him a bit more mobile and a bit more of a solid fighting force. Let's hope the Ostrogen do continue that trait. And we see the first line of fighting over here. Pioneers being forced back by a force, great force of engineers, but they might run into this MG42. MG42 opening up and blasting away. And what is this coming out of the barracks? Another MG42, a rather defensive strategy. Not entirely sure this is a good idea. This could easily mean that either player could get focused down, in particular Mr. Garav could find himself focused down as the other one will not be really able to help him with all those static emplacements and that is a bit of a danger with two versus two games that you get an opponent teammate who does seem to just lock down and not really grasp the essence of being aggressive and actually fighting together with your teammate 
and we see engineers and keeps doing a bit of harassment in the west engineers are forced to vacate the premises and full screen is quick to move in check there are no engineers nearby to come it while the mg42 team rushes for the building and we see Engineers going for this strategic cutoff point, rather sneaky. And what do we is coming out from here? Another full screen in the team, most excellent. And we see this MG42 being flanked, while another is forced to retreat. Again, this is a rather great weakness. MG42s can be easily outflanked by a proper seasoned American commander, and this is what happened here. And without infantry to actually hold the line. He has absolutely nothing to in fact hold the line or at least delay things a bit. Instead he's forced to fully retreat that many heavy weapons and it's only a miracle that it didn't end up in the hands of the enemy. MG42 holding the line but with these riflemen right here they do have a nice advantage against this build. MG42 in the building. MG42 blasting away hoping to knock out this jeep but despite the engine is on fire and everything it does get away. These riflemen enjoying the stone fence cover while further riflemen are moving in to flank. First Grenier is moving in to secure the position. Numerous First Grenier. In fact, Pioneer team is slaughtered by this Rifleman team rather viciously and mercilessly. First Grenier is charging right at these Rifleman, hoping to secure the cover. Trouble is, cover is directional, and as you may notice, not really good at this angle against these Rifleman, but they are able to force the Rifleman back, who apparently did not think that the Wrecked pickup truck was decent car, but with the nearby MG42, it would certainly have been an untenable position. Rifleman setting up in this building with a nice overwatch position over this position munitions point, but nothing else. While Chomega's forces are pressing onwards, trying to take back everything that Trichelos Ostrupen has meticulously tried to hold, but so far hasn't really had much success at. Nothing else seems to be coming out of him, and we have the skirmish phase being reached for the Wehrmacht forces, most excellent. Further, Fulskern is laying down plenty of barbed wire to deny any cover to the Americans, and this is, I'll just pause briefly, a very good thing to do. You can use barbed wire to basically deny cover to your enemy, meaning that when he attacks, he's going to be a lot more exposed on the assault, and of course, give you more time to kill him before he's actually able to find any secure place or in fact force him to retreat outright. So simply just wiring off such points as heavy cover can really make a great difference and it can also prevent your enemy from running straight at you in a beach line which is usually going to be the sort of tactic most enemies will employ so that's also a rather good thing. And back to the match. A very well done by Garav. Foskern is trying to hold the engineers and Rathman back while the other team is busy laying down barbed wire here. MG42 opening up with its high rate of fire, really putting the pressure on these engineers who may be forced to retreat or these Foskern will also be forced to get out of there. And we see a observation post going down on this fuel point. Quite interesting, so we'll probably be seeing some attempt at quickly rising up through the faces and we'll probably be seeing an attempt at probably getting the either the Sturm Armory or the Panzer Command. And we see further MG42s inching forwards trying to provide cover for each other, leapfrogging, but really again one flank and they're in a bit of trouble. And we see a medic station and a machine gun emplacement rather expecting an assault here which is certainly only going to make things much harder for the Ostrupen under Trichelou since they won't really be able to deal with those properly and MG42s are really bad on the assault some pioneers with flamethrowers but that is it and we see a creek barracks going up and a munitions point going down on this medium yield munitions point quite interesting not entirely sure what he's hoping for and BARs have been equipped for the forces under major C so that's going to be a lot of firepower and riflemen from Jamaica now joining up so they are quite Keen on focusing down Garav, and this is what I feared would happen. And so now Garav is certainly going to have to hold his own, probably. But we do see a Mauler team, further support units, and an MG42 right exposed at and machine gun emplacements. This is really bad. Now the other one is left behind to deal with this, and this is probably going to end badly. Riflemen out in the open, trying to take cover behind a cart, but it is wrecked by MG42 fire. Riflemen sneaking behind here, trying to put an end to Mr. Trichelos' forces. Absolutely horrific. 
And the mortar team now trying to move in and do something. And there we go. Sturm Armory on the field as I suspected with that observation post. And observation post can certainly be useful. And as of course you have to be careful about when and where you place them. Since it is still a 200 manpower. You're laying down for that. So that has to be taken into account. And manpower is the most precious resource in the game. If you were to ask me, Fuskan is engaging these riflemen, but they are set themselves out in the open, so they have to be careful in particular since these riflemen do have BARs. American efforts continuing in the west. Mortar team trying to fire away with its 8 cm Granatenwerfer heading some riflemen, so that's certainly not bad. And we see supply yard going down for court 28 and a weapon support center. So that will certainly be an interesting tactic. They'll probably be trying to focus a lot of firepower now, probably on Mr. Garab with a mortar to smoke out this MD-42, or at least knock it out. And a Kampfkraft center as well, and a Puma. So certainly hoping to employ some vehicular firepower against all of these riflemen. And possibly also show up the position of Mr. Trichelou, who has so far with his Austrian employed a rather defensive strategy. Looks like the Wehrmacht commander here has lost the nerve. Apparently being a bit too affected by his Austrian and themselves were not exactly known for being steady when things got hot. And we see the first Puma arriving. And infantry veterancy one. A bit of fighting here. Rifleman getting suppressed. And we see a jeep, but it will certainly be fired down by this Puma with its auto cannon. But the Puma misses every shot. Quite fortunate for the jeep. And Garab is still able to retain the central victory point. So he's stand certainly standing strong, but it could certainly change as the Americans continue to focus him down while Trichelou just seems to be fumbling around apparently thinking that support units only are the w is the way forward which it is my dear viewers most certainly not Rifleman once more charging ahead Pioneers rather exposed trying to take a point while under fire they really need to get out of there oh dear looks like these Pioneers might be getting slaughtered no, they do get out of there as a Puma is quick to try and save it, most heroically, and BARs are being equipped for Chomega. So far there seems to be nothing to actually take on this Puma. And we see a Jeep right here hiding behind everything. Not entirely sure what he's going to do, and support units also receiving a veterancy for Mr. Garav. And we see Trichelou's MD-42 suppressing these chaps. And another getting out of there, and let's have a look at him. Floating quite a lot of manpower, but not really using it for anything. Rushing straight for a Panzer Command, so he's certainly the apparently the type to just go for some unit which he himself believes to. Oh right, that deals with infantry, then I get that, and everything will be magically alright. That's not how you do it, you actually need to look at the role, and the role of support units are strange enough actually to support and so far they have nothing to actually support so they become a lot less effective they are force multipliers and zero divided by something is still zero or at least one at the very least so there's not much there to actually multiply with Bunker are awfully exposed by Garab I'm not entirely sure why he's had this, this far out again if you remember my discussions on the placement of Bunker 